In six minutes from now, you're going to see this. Uh, subject to the weather, and we do have that high haze layer at around 2,500 feet that may obstruct some of our view. But the ignition takes place, you know it begins, nine seconds before the actual liftoff. The hold down arms hold the rocket onto the launch pad until uh, pressure is built up, until it can take off. Then they fly away, and uh, after the zero hour, T, the first motion, as the great spaceship that we've seen in these other Apollo uh, launches uh, slowly begins to rise. Uh, immediately, it begins to turn just slightly, the yaw it's called, that goes on for about eight seconds, and perhaps you'll be able to see it uh, as it just does that little bit of turning. Uh, then it begins a, a, a that, that's that's a slight tilt. And then it rolls. It begins to roll. That goes on for another 20 seconds. Uh, by that time, uh, there's just a half a minute gone by, and it's just barely getting up into the sky at that point. Then it's picking up speed, of course, very rapidly. A minute after the launch, it's reached uh, three. Uh, 0.7 miles. It's about a mile and uh, 15 hundredths uh, downrange from us, and it's now moving 1,250 miles an hour. Just a few seconds after that, you see that contrail as it uh, uh, builds up maximum dynamic pressure in, uh, in, uh, against the atmosphere that it's attempting to escape. The uh, altitude then is seven, oh, just about eight miles, 7.98 miles. It's three and a half miles downrange from us, and it's up to 1,783 miles an hour. Now, that's uh, one minute and 23 seconds into the flight. Two minutes and 15 seconds into the flight, the center engine of the first stage uh, cuts off. A uh, few, uh, oh, not quite uh, 25 seconds uh, later, the outboard engines cut off, and then at two minutes and 45 seconds into the flight, the first stage separates. At that time, the the rocket is 41 and three quarters miles high and 59 miles down range and going 6,150 miles an hour. But with the so-called Igor camera, this uh, very long range camera, which we've used in the past, was denied to us on Apollo 12 because of the heavy clouds. We couldn't see anything and neither could the camera. We have seen that separation actually take place as far away as it is, 41 miles high and 60 miles down range. We can get a good look at it. Then uh, at two, uh, right after that, the second stage ignites. And we see that as well if we've got uh, good visibility. The second stage uh, uh, is, uh, well, the tower is jettisoned first at three minutes and 20 seconds. That's that launch escape tower up the top of the rocket. Uh, it's due to come back uh, and land out in the Atlantic uh, for some uh, six or seven minutes after that. At, uh, at then, let's see, the... Uh, the next is the, is the uh, second stage engine cutoff. That comes seven minutes and 43 seconds into the flight. Uh, the outboard engines cut off another minute and a half after that. Uh, then the separation of the second stage. And then with the third stage, they go into the uh, Earth orbit. Uh, one and a half trips around the Earth. And then with the third stage of the rocket fires to put them on the trajectory toward the moon. That comes. Uh, about uh, four hours into the flight later on in the afternoon after one and a half orbits of the Earth. The firing taking place out over the Pacific. Time now, two and a half minutes before the launch of Apollo 13. Test conductor Paul Donnelly has told the astronauts, good luck, head for the hills. <laughs> the automatic launch sequence has begun. Uh, the computers have taken over, and uh, from here on out, uh, the, the countdown is automatic right toward the launch. Of course, it can be called off, as Wally knows, even after those engines are fired. Uh, but uh, we don't expect that. We don't expect that. No. <laughs> we designed that out, in fact. I uh, have a lot to do with that particular design requirement. Really? Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, Once the engines are fired, you have to go. No, I didn't mean it that way. The, the malfunction that occurred, oh, uh, a plug oh. pulled out, and that caused yeah, yeah. the engine to shut down yeah. prematurely. Oh. Fortunately, prematurely enough that we hadn't started to lift off, at least. <laughs> We're going to start listening now to uh, Chuck Holland's head, the voice of mission control. Uh, One minute to 45 seconds to go. second stage liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized. We'll be making our final transfer from external power source, that is from the external power source at the pad, to the launch vehicle batteries at the T-minus 50 second mark. We'll be keeping an eye on that power transfer at T-minus 50 seconds.
the S4B propellants. Now all pressurized. S4B propellants, that's the third stage of the Saturn V pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds, and counting. The spacecraft equipment now is on its own internal cooling. It's been uh, sharing its cooling from an, getting its cooling from an external power source up to this time. We're now approaching the T-minus one minute mark. T-minus one minute. T-minus well, one we minute. We even, uh, and counting. We're buffeting today now, because of the low cloud cover. In the final minute of our countdown. We get quite a shaking here. At the 32nd mark. They uh, keep the sun uh, down. You're right. See the interesting one. Let's see if the place holds together. As we pass the T-minus 50 second mark, the power transfer takes place. First stage, second stage, third stage, and the instrument unit going to internal power. T minus 37 seconds, and our count continues to go well. We'll be looking for an ignition of those five first stage engines at the T minus 8.9 second mark. We've passed T minus 30, T minus 25 seconds, and counting, and Apollo 13 is go. T minus 20 seconds, T minus 20 seconds, and counting. 17, guidance release, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have commit and we have liftoff at 2.13. The Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust and it has cleared the tower. Turning on time. Mission control. There we go. <laughs> It's a beauty. Oh, it's another beauty. You know, I think this is Jack's flight. Uh, flight. Uh, the projector looks good. They show <laughs> one half mile an hour at this time. 13 use and go at 30 seconds. seeing it quite well through that haze. All sources continue yeah. to report where go. The trajectory on our plot boards is right on the pre-planned -pre line. It's a good one. Looks like a very good one. There, they can see that. And Booster Engineer reports we're now through the region of maximum dynamic pressure, and we're go. That's one of the areas you worry about is that maximum dynamic pressure because every bit of that outer surface is sensitive to this tremendous pressure that builds up due to the velocity in the atmosphere. Yeah, really, uh, that's probably one of the more traumatic per periods for training at least. 13 Houston, stand by for mode 1 Charlie. Mark, you're 1 Charlie. Mark, 1 Charlie. Oh, and good communication. Go for staging. Go for staging, Roger. We're EDS manual. Everything. 17 miles coming up on staging. Everything right on uh, time. Staging coming up. That means the cutoff of the uh, first stage engines. Jim Lovell reports the inboard engine has shut down as scheduled. Amazing, a big booster is already history. <laughs> we confirm inboard out 13. You're looking good. Roger. It's due to uh, a big booster splashes down in the... Coming up uh, on 30 miles altitude. Flash it down in the Atlantic uh, in about uh, 20 minutes. You can oh. see uh, there, uh, that's one of the uh, uh, static no cameras. Ignition. They're Roger. washing down yeah. thousands of gallons of water pour forth there to uh, to cool and to put out any little fires that may have started. There 13 Houston, trajectory is good, thrust is good. Satisfier. Satisfy those pollution-minded people. Uh, that was hydrogen and oxygen, so we weren't polluting today. Tower <laughs> jet. That's the interstage. We confirm skirt set. Roger. Tower jet. Mode two. Jim, looking good. Mode two. Now you see the launch tower off. Now they can look out too. That loose protective cover goes with that tower. It's like an ice cream cone over the top. And, and as a result, now the windows are all uh, uh, 
open to view. This is the first view they had. Yes, it is. There's one small one, though, that they can look at, of course, to communicate with people outside the spacecraft when they're on the launch pad. Okay, thank you. Communicate with visual signals, I mean. And now, all of a sudden, there are two guys that are looking at that same beautiful view you've been hearing us all talk about. And Coming it really is a beautiful minutes. view. We're now at an altitude of 63 miles. That boost cover is on there because uh, uh, the heat builds up uh, on launch to 400, 450 degrees and also scores the windows. And yes, the, that's exactly right. Keep them clean. You know, another, another interesting thing that maybe not many people realize is that the men are actually heads down at this point. They go into Earth orbit with their heads down. So it's sort of like flying through the top of a loop as you go into orbit, which is a rather unusual attitude. Is it disturbing? No, no, and you become acclimated to it, but uh, it was quite a surprise to me after having gone into orbit in Mercury, heads up, the and then all of a sudden, on Gemini, I went into orbit heads on my side. <laughs> we finally rotated the full 180 to heads down on this flight. Uh, that first day, which is now... Miles downrange now the uh, ECOM reports. About five minutes. You're looking perfect. Over. Thirteen, Roger. Gee, Jim, ECOM sure reports is. that the cabin pressure is sealed at 6.1 pounds, which is normal. Good communication, too. Mm -hmm. Nice, clear. We're course. now 250 miles downrange, altitude 81 nautical miles. That uh, that uh, first stage booster is going to plop down the Atlantic about 402.5 miles. They've got it pinpointed ah. exactly uh, downrange from here in another five minutes. Shipping has been warned to stay out of the way after some of the Apollo 11 parts dropped on a German ship out in the oh, middle really? of the Atlantic. Uh, and yeah. five minutes, 30 seconds. Have, have you heard launch, that the uh, look very good on the S4B of the Apollo 12 is in Earth orbit rather than in solar orbit? Down no. It missed just a little bit. And as a result, it went into Earth orbit. It's a way, way, way out yeah. one. Yes, I don't think it'll drop in just now. But. <laughs> Stand by for S4B to COI capability. S4B Roger. Roger, you've got it now, Jim. We've got uh, I bet this one guy isn't too happy. That's no. Cam Mission Control. That's what you're in the dark the shirt. The ball and head leaning back there. The top of the picture. Oh, yeah, what he's going to do right now is start training for 16, I'm sure. Go yeah. <laughs> Training for 16, looking for Chuck Berry, the doctor. <laughs> and, uh, Houston, what's the story on engine 5? Jim, uh, Houston, we don't have a story on why the inboard out was uh, early, but the uh, other engines are go and you're go. Hmm. Roger. Apparently had an early shutdown on the inboard. I'm not sure if he's talking the second stage or not. Uh, actually, the second stage is capable of compensating unless it was a very early. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. That's an interesting thing, in fact. Yeah, it's like minutes, 40 seconds. It's still looking good. Your gimbals are good. Trim is good. The five Roger. engines of the first stage course are required to complete the total mission but if one of those fails at a certain point in time the other four can maintain enough lift for the vehicle to continue on. Time, eight plus three eight nominal s2 cutoff time nine or plus four eight over roger nominal on the level set time nine or four eight on the uh s2 cutoff that's affirmative and stand by for s4b to orbit mark you have s4b to orbit jim roger we have s4b to orbit They're now uh, about 111. We good engines on the Saturn second stage. We show an altitude of 96 nautical miles, 545 downrange. It's a little over 600 statute miles downrange. 